Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is your brother Yayo, Ezra Ben Levy, coming at you with another video. I will not waste my time because I, I have 24 verses that I have to read. I will be coming from Psalms 31. My prayer is that Yehovah, the Holy One of Israel, will bless you, will open your eyes that you may see the truth that lies within. And I hope that it will provoke you to change your heart and your mind on many things that you deem to be true, that you deem to be um, your pillar in your life. I will be doing this reading out of the King James Version of the Bible only because it is so trusted by many of our people. So I want to come out of the text, the translation that they feel comfortable with. Because even upon using this, I believe if they will be honest and sincere with what is shared. They will plainly see what the text say in its context. Because I'm not going to pull out just one verse. I, I want to read Psalms 31 in its entirety. So, Yehovah, the Holy One of Israel, the God of our fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, let the hearing of your word do that which it was established to do. Let it be a blessing to your people. And may they humble themselves and hearken to the words thereof. Hallelujah. Psalm 31 or Tehillim 31. As I said before, I'll be doing this reading from the King James Version, starting at verse 1. Hallelujah. First of all, let me say, uh, even though I'm reading from the King James, when it gets to the name of the Creator, as you all know, some of you may not, when you see Lord in all caps in the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that is where the actual name of the Creator is in the Hebrew so I just want to restore his name. Now, my pronunciation of his name may vary from yours, but I want you to know I am talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. Verse 1, in thee, O Yehoah, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. As we plainly say, I want to just share this one thing. We plainly see Yehoah. It's in Yehoah we should put our trust in Yehoah. Say, let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. It's so clear to see. It's so beautifully laid out and explained clearly. Bow down thy ears to me. Deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock. Now, I know many people say Jesus is their rock. I'm going to let you know I am not in error. I'm not lost. Yehoah is my rock. We see it plainly right here. Yehoah is the strong rock. And if you disagree with this, you are saying this is wrong. So I like to know, I'm going to get back to the scriptures. I like to know how am I lost if I'm echoing but the text say, and verse one plainly lets you know who it is referring to. It is not talking about, and I mean no disrespect, it is not talking about a, um, a Yehoshua, a Yeshua, a Jesus, a Yahabashai. It is talking about Yehoah. You may say Yahuwah, you may say Yahweh, you may say Jehovah, but it is perfectly clear who it is talking about from verse one. For a house, verse 2, bow down thy ears to me and deliver me speedily. Be thou my strong rock for a house of defense to save me. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, thy name, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. You see right here, verse 3. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Not for another person's namesake, not for the sake of Christ, not for the sake of his name. It lays it out perfectly clear. 
Therefore, for, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Whose name? Go back to verse one. You will find out the name. Verse four, pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me, for thou art my strength. Into thy hands I commit my spirit, for thou has redeemed me, O Yehoah, Elohim of truth. So we, we plainly see. Once again, it's laid out so beautiful, so crystal clear. It said, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Not into the hands of Christ. I commit my spirit into the hands of Yehoah and no other. Verse 6. I have hated them that regard lying vanities, but I trust in Yehoah. I will be glad and rejoice in thy mercy, for thou hast considered my trouble. Thou hast known my soul in the um, in adversity, adversities, and thou hast not shut me up into the hands of the enemy. Thou hast set my feet in a large room. Have mercy upon me, O Jehovah, for I am in trouble. My eyes is consumed with grief, yea, my soul and my belly. For my life is spent with grief and my ears with sighing. My strength fell because of my iniquity and my bones are consumed. I was reproached among all my enemies, but especially among my neighbors and a fear to my acquaintance. They that did see me without fled from me. I am forgotten as a dead man out of mine. I am like a broken vessel. 13. For I have heard the slander of many. Fear was on every side. While they took counsel together against me, they devised to take away my life. Verse 14. But I trust in thee, O Jehovah. I said, thou art my Elohim, my God, my source, my power. Verse 15, my times are in thy hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and from them that persecute me. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Save me for thy mercy sake. Let me not be ashamed, O Jehovah. Let me go back to verse 16. It said, make thy face to shine upon thy servant Save me for thy mercy's sake. It didn't say save me for the sake of Yeshua. Save me for the sake of the blood. It doesn't say that. We got to let the text be true. Verse 17. Let me not be ashamed, O Yehovah, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence which speak grievous things proudly and, and contemptuously, contemptuously against the righteous. 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them which fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee. Behold the sons of men. Thou shalt hide them in the secrets of thy presence, from the pride of men. Thou shalt keep them secretly in the pavilion from the strife of tongues. Blessed be Jehovah, for he has showed me this his marvelous kindness in a strong city. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thy eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. My brothers and sisters, all your prayers, your supplications, have to be directed unto Yehovah and no other. To Yehovah in his name. I don't have to attach another name to activate my prayers or to get my prayers heard by Yehovah. Verse, maybe read verse 22 again. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thy eyes. Nevertheless, thou heardest me Heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. O oh, love, Yehovah, all ye his saints, for Yehovah preserveth the faithful and plentiful reward the proud doer. 
Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in Yehovah. Verse 24, allow me to read it again. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. All ye that hope in Yehovah. It don't say who hope in Christ, who hope in the Messiah. It doesn't say who hope in Jesus. It doesn't say who hope in Yeshua, Yehoshua, Yahabashai. It doesn't say that. We read all 24 verses. We read in context. We didn't skip nothing. We read everything. And you can see who it is about, who it is exalting, who is it is instructing us to turn to, who is our rock. Our rock is Jehovah. Now, many of you, my brothers and sisters, I strongly disagree with you, but I know many of you say Jesus is your rock. Yahabasha is your rock. But that's not what we see in the scriptures. And when I say scriptures, I am speaking of what you call the Old Testament. The Tanakh, the Holy Scriptures, is laid out crystal clear who is our rock, who is our shield, who is our buckler, who is our redeemer, who is our healer. It is Jehovah. The Elohim of our fathers, Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yavkov. So my brothers and my sisters, take the time to read this again. Meditate. Be honest and sincere with what is written in the text. Shalom.